Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Mr. Vijay Shankar, the editor of Frontline. Very recently, Mr. Rajnikanth has announced his political plunge in a more un, uh, unexpected time. So, sir, to start with, what do you think is the impact of uh, Rajnikanth's entry into the politics? You know, Rajnikanth actually, even now it's suspense. Actually, only when he announces it and only when he launches the party with a name and a flag can we really trust him. But I think the, this time he's serious. You know why I say this? Actually, when uh, Rajnikanth uh, announced his, uh, again, again, uh, uh, recently when he made an announcement about, uh, about his entry into politics, uh, suddenly somebody really dug out some old issue of Junior Vikram, one of the popular magazines which came out some 25 years ago, it had the cover with a question, you know, with Rajinikanth's picture. Will Rajinikanth come to politics? So this has been happening for the past 25-30 years. He has been talking about it. But again, uh, people gave up hope. Only this uh, Rajini Fans Association, they were uh, pressing him every now and then. There will be posters about Rajini being our chief minister. Please come and take over leadership, that kind of thing. Otherwise, nobody took him seriously because he was uh, really into a lot of... Yeah, because he is a superstar, Entire film industry depended on him because he provided a lot of uh, employment for people and the superstar status brand, you know, because he is a brand. Actually, the film industry benefited by that. So that he was concentrating more on that. So making money, that was a real, uh, 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 that was the real thing. So he, people actually gave up. What really happened was some three years ago, again, he made a very serious announcement that he is going to start at a college function. Uh, you know, why this three years is very important because uh, he decided to make this announcement at a time when two stalwarts were not there. One, Jailalitha. Jailalitha is passing away uh, five years ago or four years ago and Karnataka within two years. So now there is a people think that there is a vacuum now. Some big, two big leaders are out. So that gave him the courage to, uh, that's what we believe. So he announced it still. After that also, he was really postponing it because the last time he, after that announcement, he asked his fans club to work among the people to create uh, mandrams. Mandram means, I don't know how to translate. Mandram is more than a club because it's a kind of social service organization. So all over Tamil Nadu, he asked them to convert into the, the membership drive, everything promised. But later, he used to meet his fan club members, office bearers at a Kalyana Mandapam he owns in uh, Chennai. So at that meeting, people again, there was a lot of expectation. Media was waiting for him. He was supposed to make an announcement. He came and, uh, but he he suddenly went all out against the uh, fans club. That's Mandram. Uh, office bearer saying that you didn't do your work properly. You didn't do whatever I asked you to do. And in between, he had to take action against two people for some corruption charge or something. again. So these are the, uh, then he announced it. Uh, then he blamed it. Then, uh, then he left. So people thought that again, uh, so he says only if you are prepared and only if there is an uprising, there is an edichi, they call it edichi in Tamil, only if there is an uprising will come to politics. So here usually it's the other way around. People come to politics and create a kind of uh, uh, situation where people uh, fight against something, some major movement. But he wanted some major uprising first, then he wanted to enter the scene. So then again, people gave up hope. And again, uh, two, three meetings happened. And the last meeting, one, three, I'm giving the background because it's very important to understand the man. So last meeting uh, that uh, he came to the Mandabum uh, just before that meeting, uh, the final meeting where he finally made the announcement that he'll announce a party on December 31st. Uh, just by a week, week before that something happened in Tamil Nadu, suddenly a WhatsApp message was doing the rounds. It was going viral. It spoke about Rajini's real health situation. Uh, and the first time we came to know that he had some real problem, he had to undergo a kidney transplant. He was in Singapore for a long time, but uh, we didn't know that. So, uh, so that video was doing the rounds. So without, and Rajnikanth after two days of media, even big, big newspapers reported. And Rajnikanth came out and two days later, I think he said that, that what the video says is true about my health condition. That's what he says, but he didn't want to say whether he will come to politics or not. Then people thought that he's going to make that an excuse for not entering politics. So what I from all this, I think that there is some kind of reluctance up to the last announcement, some kind of reluctance. So the way he made this announcement also is very, very suspicious. He came to the Maklaya Mandabum, 
he met the office bearers then he went back and he made this grand announcement over the party like again from the gates of from his residence he always make he doesn't come in a press conference he always may mix them and so he made this announcement so finally people believe that he will come to politics but the way the circumstances in which it was held is very interesting if you i don't know if you watch the video there are two people standing next to him one was tamidaruvi maniyan who has been persuading him for a long time tamidaruvi maniyan this person who was persuading him for a long time even he gave up uh, some few months ago later he was standing there is another person standing next to rajnigan that is the most important thing nobody knew who it was suddenly rajnigan announced that this name is arjuna murthy this man is going to be the coordinator of my party so then people started to, there is a lot of speculation who is this arjuna murthy then the real thing came out within 2 hours and bjp makes an announcement official announcement that arjuna murthy was there uh bjp's intellectual wing which is an oxymoron in my opinion bjp's intellectual wing is an oxymoron it's a contradiction in terms so he, he the agents he was heading it nobody knew that there was an intellectual wing in bjp especially in tamil nadu so he was expelled he was relieved from this so then it's not dismissed or expelled yeah uh, it is uh, suddenly uh, until that moment nobody knew who arjuna murthy was so this announcement and his expulsion it is typical rss style rss dispatches people deputes people to various sister organizations sang parivar organizations to do, the, do their work that's we know the rss is functioning but here is a very strange situation a party rss it looks like that i am not saying that rss is sent in but the way they went, they went about it somebody has been deputed whether it's bjp or rss to a party which is yet to be launched This is a very very ironic, strange situation. So this this created the impression that he is under some compulsion to come to politics. So it's it, he, even now I believe that he is a reluctant politician. Rajnikanth has that film personality magic is there definitely. When a Rajnikanth movie is the mood is completely different. Even educated people there are I know many highly educated people who are living abroad. Even he has fan clubs in Japan. Yeah, that's a different thing. But politics, does he have that kind of pull? I don't think so. That is, people are very clear in Tamil Nadu about politics. Only person who really succeeded is M. G. Ramachandran. But M. G. Ramachandran was not only an actor; he was a politician also throughout his life. He was part of DMK. DMK benefited because of him. DMK organization benefited because of him. His fan club and DMK uh, organization cannot be separated. he was a politician he knew politics he was part of political movements but rajinikanth doesn't have any of these experiences so you need a kind of mg and again this thing doesn't repeat itself we have that is in the same way mgr is different it's a different setting different uh, era rajinikanth is in a completely in what way has he uh, what is his political experience see politics it's not very easy just is that is see i know people outside tamil nadu have that in tamil nadu cinema and politics you cannot separate it's not true yeah. mgr's case is different they don't know that mgr was also a politician and jailalitha succeeded as some kind of charisma was there but he she inherited a huge organization created by mgr now they have to celebrate their 50th year now huge organization yeah. and it, that is a see in tamil nadu politics very interestingly uh, no other party is able to enter because of the split of dmk Dravidian movements split is sustaining the Dravidian movement. One Dravidian movement is more rooted in the kind of ideology, kind of things. Uh, some they, they are uh, they have something. Another uh, thing is people who are not very familiar with the ideology, people are very supportive of that ideology. They are in the medium key. So this two-party thing within Tamil, this actually in my opinion. The split in Dravidian movement is keeping it alive. Now it may change because medium key. Uh, will not be able to sustain itself for a long time and this red god there is no leader who can keep pdmk together so the future of bjp or any it's not only bjp any political party which plays it, even the left parties or congress is difficult congress cannot even if you give them give it to them on a platter they will just throw it away they know how to do it because there will be 100 hands to take the plate but any party which plays uh, imaginative politics taking into account the economic political situation the changes that are happening for example the farmers agitation who do expect such a huge agitation so objective situation and 
uh, Tamil Nadu, if, uh, in my opinion, DMK is uh, likely to win this at time. Even after that, there will be a huge question how DMK government is going to really fare in this election. Uh, after even if they come to power, real issues will come. So there is a space now, really, there is an opening now. It is not huge enough for to Rajinikans to walk in, but this gap, this space is going to increase. There is no doubt about it. Who will fill this space and how? This is the politics of Tamil Nadu in the next 10 years. Uh, so, uh, talking about the political affiliations of uh, Rajnikan, uh, since 2014, we have seen him endorse the policies of the BJP and uh, the huge announcement of uh, Narendra Modi, including demonetization. So, yeah. do you think that uh, uh, he has a more proximity to the right than, more than any other political uh, ideology? Yeah, it is very clear. He is. Uh... Uh, on many occasions, uh, even in his films, his uh, views were uh, really like anti-women, women's liberation. He talks about where, how women should be subservient, that kind of uh, stuff. And even another movie I watched recently, he is against. He says in one of the movies where these people, you know, these uh, these uh, big actors, they choose their dialogue also songs. So you can't say that it's only written by somebody else. So there is a strike in the factory. He goes and talks to the uh, workers, saying that uh, husband and wife, uh, the relationship between a worker and the management is like husband and wife relationship. It should happen only inside the factory premises. Should not come out. <laughs> now that kind of he is known for his all his backward looking views throughout his uh, film. Most of the films, though he acts like a revolutionary, most of them have very very backward looking views. And uh, specific issues, as you said, uh, demonetization, he was completely supporting. Then the worst part of it is people in Tamil Nadu got angry with him because this Tutukudi firing, no? there was a big protest mm -hmm. against Sterling. Some 13 people are killed brutally in brutal day night by the police. So there was a big protest. This uh, Rajnikanth went and met these uh, victims and he, uh, at the airport. He made a very devastating statement without uh, supporting the protesters or at least showing some sympathy to people who are really affected by that, who are shot down. He just said that if you are going to fight all the time, if the, if you talk about strike, strike or any movement or agitation all the time, uh, nobody can save Tamil Nadu. It will become a kind of graveyard. So that is the kind of, he is a basically a kind of uh, uh, right word looking backward look backward looking right right this views you know, throughout his life and even on issues also he comes out like that so that is it and he called uh, amit shah and uh, modi recently like krishna and arjuna and now people are still trying to make out who is krishna and who is arjuna that is a kind of thing and he also tries to kind of every uh, after his movie uh, projects are over he goes to himalayas he presents himself as a kind of very religious person always in Diana and but when it comes to money he is not averse to making money that is a different thing he is very particular about yeah. it but that's a different thing it's a profession but he projects himself as a religious spiritually minded person uh, he always uh, goes to Himalayas he goes in search of old Swamiji's he's in touch with many spiritual personalities that kind of thing so it suits BJP it will be it will it's a perfect natural ally actually for BJP with what you said, uh, we were introduced with a new term called spiritual politics some uh, uh, three yeah. years back when he made the right. big announcement. So do right. you think that he has a complete understanding of what actually is the reality is uh, the issues of communalism, corruption, a lot of things we have to overcome no. in Tamil Nadu. No, no, it's, it's very, no, no. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, no, very interestingly, Rajnikan's famous sister statement is system ketupoche. That means system serila. Yeah. Systems are real. Overall, there is a statement is okay, but what kind of system he is talking about? Is he talking about the political system? Is he talking about federal system of governance in India? Or he is talking about the economic system where neoliberalism is on the rise? Or is he talking about social system where caste hierarchy, caste atrocities are happening and where uh, uh, this caste system? So we don't know what system he talks about. It's a very general kind of statement. The problem with these actors, including Kamala Hassan, most of the time they take in generalities. 
to this and ask me question so this vagueness is not going to help what system what what are you going to fight against whom are you going to fight who is left? see in all this game even kamala hassan or whatever is actors no they play one one very interesting game uh, it's like uh, this uh, uh, where uh, you don't see the real actors no you don't really attack people who are behind corruption who is behind corruption who is behind uh, all these problems in india who is behind poverty who is behind uh, farmer agitation policies you don't talk about any policy at all what is your alternative policy it's too much for them see i don't want to tax their brains with their uh, these questions but uh, you have to answer these questions when you come to politics how are you going to run it initially a, a month back uh, by the end of october uh, you referred to that uh, explanation of rajnikanth also he is health concerns with now with the uh, declaration of that uh, he is going to take the political plunge will he be able yeah. to meet the masses considering his health issues and the cadres which he has as you yeah. usually refer that uh, they are all 50 plus or more than 55 plus so no, will no, he be able as, to reach out to yeah. the very good masses? Question, yeah. no no i know i know see for the past 8 months at least 9 for the 9 months we stayed at home for a few Months, then we start yeah. coming out, and we have to be with all the social distancing norms. As far as I know, Rajinikanth didn't come out of this poet's garden house or his another farm house he has. So yeah. he he has to take care of his health. See, we are all see we don't uh, we are opposing his politics. I am uh, asking many questions about his politics. He has to take care of his health. It's good that he stayed inside. Even his yeah. meet the press programs happen just outside the gate. He doesn't even meet people. Yeah. Election is a different ball game. You have to go and meet the people. I see. Even if Rajnikanth is going to make a huge impact, uh, you have to go and see the people. There will be a big crowd. See, it is. It's good. It there will be. If Rajnikanth, if you announce that Rajnikanth is going to appear in public in any corner of Tamil Nadu, there will be a huge crowd. Whether it will come to be converted into, it will be converted into votes is a different thing. It will be there. But will he risk it? One risking Corona. Even if it is not Corona. You know the punishing schedule. You you, you must have seen even Jayalalitha yeah. even when she was not well. Karnataka even when he, they used to travel for one month program, one month touring almost all parts. Of, is it possible for Rajinikanth to do it? It is very difficult. More important question is, you need see to win elections. Elections are won at polling booths, not from your stage, no, from your uh, conferences or public meetings. Public meetings, if we go by public meeting, Nipi Singh should have been the Prime Minister for a long time. He was a very popular leader. But the thing is, organization on the ground. So, Rajinikanth with his fan club, if he is not going to align with any party, as he says, fan club, you cannot match traditional political parties which has been in the game, which have been in the game of bringing people to the election booths and booth management is an art in itself. For that, you need a lot of political experience and you are facing two major parties who are veterans. At least two parties. Uh, even, if, even other parties, for example, the left parties who are relatively weak, they are very good in this ground level politics. No? Without that, you can't win elections. Uh, going house to house and talking to people, that kind of thing should happen. So, uh, my point is, in Tamil Nadu politics, there is no vacuum like uh, Andhra. NTR, uh, when he formed the party, people always talk about NTR. In NTR's case, Congress was a dominant party. There was no very distant second, there was a left parties. Left parties were very distant second, the left parties. So there was no major opposition. There was a political vacuum there and NTR walks in and people felt uh, really insulted by the change of at least five chief ministers in two years or three years. One chief minister was dismissed at the airport by Indira Gandhi. They felt that they have been insulted. The kind of feeling that BJP uh, uh, invited in Tamil Nadu, that is the kind of feeling exists against BJP. So this kind of anger, and where he enters and it is filled with image, this uh, sense of insult, you know, the anger, that turns into politics. But in Tamil Nadu situation, there are very big two big players with about 60% of the votes. Then you have uh, Dalit parties, two Dalit parties with their pockets of influence. You have left parties with their pockets of influence with two or three percent. 
then you have another big party like one year party pmk which is very strong in at least some 5% of the votes so already the political space is very narrow for any person to enter this is the situation in tamil nadu so a person who wants to make really a kind of uh, uh, storm as a storm into the sea there is no real anger against even against adp there is no huge anger against adp that is a reality you have to admit it but what is happening is all the political space is divided up among all these big parties and small parties the 70 to 80 percent so you have maybe or a floating population or people who are not desired not politically oriented people are not voters of any political but 20 25 percent so for a person to really make a breakthrough he should be either politically very strong he should make uh, capture people's imagination with his politics what is rajanikanth's politics or you should have the organizational to, to strengthen and break all these parties ground level strength what is rajanikanth's strength fans it will not work fan clubs cannot be they can really create cutouts and pour milk over it uh, conduct mobilizations so, but they cannot win elections so organizationally politically and ideologically where do you stand so in three respects rajanikanth do not in my opinion a uh, uh, unless he produces a miracle in january organizationally ideologically and politically he should be the kind of force which will really break all these parties and bring at least 5 to 10% from all these formations to win an election which is as of now it is not going to happen it is very clear for people who are observing the scene and you have kamalas and also he, he will take away chip, chip away some uh, city votes so where is the space for rajnikanth and where is his force from where does he get this strength to attract all these voters like a magnet no he should be able to attract people voters from all these parties break all these parties base to win at even to get from 20% of the vote which is not possible in my opinion unless some major something happens i don't know i don't know some kind of some god comes down and tells people that you vote for in every temple some kind of miracle should happen otherwise only a miracle can uh, help us. maybe 5 to 10 percent maximum